Yes. Rachel Clark ending that report from Victoria Macdonald. Well, as you can imagine, we did ask for a minister to respond to both the concerns of the Royal Colleges and of those junior doctors, but they referred us to the NHS employers who have conducted the contract negotiations and who you saw in Victoria's report. But I am joined now by Dr. Roshana Median, who is currently working as an orth orthopaedic registrar, and Alex Wilde from the Taxpayers Alliance. Uh, Dr. Roshana Median, first. If patient safety is your main worry, would you not be free, in theory, to take fewer hours? To take fewer hours? To, or to reduce your hours. If you're concerned that by working such long hours you're jeopardising patient safety, mm -hmm. could you cut your hours? I think what's important to note here is that NHS employees and the government aren't asking us to cut hours or to take a pay cut that is to do with hours working. What they're asking to do, us to do is essentially work more hours. And that is unsafe for doctors because we're not machinery. But that's what I'm we, saying. Couldn't yeah. you just reduce your hours if you're saying, you know, just work fewer hours? Or are you obliged to work the number of hours and, that are set Well, up? at the moment, we are having to work often unpaid extra hours, um, which we're happy to do. We do it as a profession because there's not enough doctors to cover the service. So if we were to cut our hours, there wouldn't be enough doctors to cover the service. Patient safety is at risk. Well, I think there are a number of sort of misconceptions about what's actually being proposed here by the government. There isn't an across-the-board pay cut. That's not actually what's being proposed. Actually, the basic element of pay is actually scheduled to, to go up. What the government is trying to do here is move this towards a more seven-day service, and they've been doing that with the consultants' contract, which the BMA have actually returned to the table to negotiate. And now they're trying to do the same for, for junior doctors. Of what's actually going to happen is that when we talk about a 90-hour normal week, that doesn't mean people are actually going to be working for 90 hours. That's the sort of window in which the sort of standard pay. So what will happen is that for some unsocial hours, people will be paid slightly less than they were previously. But for the very, very unsocial hours, say, 1 o'clock on a Saturday morning, you'll actually be paid more. So but if normal work, some people will be working up to 90 hours a week. That's no, no, the, there's an absolute limit of 72 hours. And I'm the sorry. NHS employees may have I been... Interject? Sorry, may Different. I interject? Um, no, they have put a limit of 72 hours a week, but they're also removing the safeguards. And those are the safeguards that they require the hospitals to monitor our hours to ensure that we don't work over 72 hours per week. They're removing those safeguards, so we could be working 100-hour weeks like they did 20 years ago, which they re regarded as unsafe, and that's why they put a stop to that practice in the first place. The BMA has actually agreed to, to 72 element, and they've been also very clear that the average amount of hours worked will remain between 40 and 48 hours. OK, but and even if it goes up to 72 hours, don't you accept there is a risk to patient well, safety there? What, what I would say about that is that we, sh that we have a very sort of centralised system in, in healthcare, and I just think that these kind of decisions would be far better left to sort of local managers closer to the situation to actually decide, you know, what's in the best... Interest, but which it's not doctors ideal to have tired time. doctors working No, no, it's, patients, it's, it, it? it's, it's absolutely not ideal. No, one, no one's disputing that junior doctors work incredibly hard. They should be paid appropriately. I don't think anyone would begrudge that, but it's just important that we have an honest debate about this. And at the moment, with the BMA not actually in negotiations, it's very difficult for them to represent their members. Real negotiations weren't offered to the BMA. Well, let me put the point on pay to you, because if basic pay is going up... Mm -hmm. oh, you, what, what are you complaining about, if that is the case? So, I've not actually complained about pay once right. here. Um, but others are. Some are they wrong are. to? Some people are, but I don't think that's our main concern as a profession. And the Royal Colleges and the Scottish and Welsh governments and the junior doctors as a whole are concerned about patient safety first and foremost. We took an oath to look after our patients and put their interests first. If we let this contract through, we are not upholding that oath. And quite frankly, the Department of Health should be ashamed of themselves for putting us in this situation. What about women who will lose out if they take maternity leave because they won't get the incremental pay rates? That's rate? right. So I'm a uh, woman, obviously, and I'm a surgeon. So at some point, I'd quite like to start a family. But what these proposals show are that if you take time out, so if you take time out for maternity leave, part-time working, or for the academics who work on, for instance, cancer research, they will be penalised for taking that time out. How do you feel about that? It makes me very upset indeed.
It's not right, well, is it? Well, the, the point is that what's being actually proposed by, um, by NHS employers is actually the starting point for negotiations. They're not saying this is it, take it or leave it. And the fact is these negotiations just are not happening and I'd urge sort of junior doctors to actually put pressure on the Again. BMA to actually get around the table and negotiate on their behalf. Again, that's incorrect, I'm sorry. But the BMA... BMA's walked away and they're not coming back. They weren't negotiations. What they were, were here are our recommendations we want these as an absolute, that's what NHS employers said, we want these points, the ones you've mentioned, as an absolute, we'll negotiate the finer points with you. They were not willing to budge on the assurances that we all want and that are unsafe for patients. Well, what will you do? Will you emigrate, change career? Let's put it this way, I've never, in my whole career, and I've been training now for nine, ten years, I've never considered doing something different or emigrating. In the last few months, I've considered that and I've started looking at my options and so have every single one of my colleagues. Dr. Roshana Median and Alex Wilde, thank you very thank much you. for joining me.